Welcome back to Southwest Yard and Garden. I'm Curtis Smith, and we've returned to the Tufnell Garden where Alan Tufnell had to take a steep slope and turn it into a usable garden. Alan, I see you're also drawing pictures as well, so you're more than just a construction specialist. Well, I try to do a lot of things. Thank you. Oh, Alan, that's yeah. a beautiful picture well, you're thank drawing. You. I'm just learning how to be an artist. So. Learning. <laughs> How so, many flowers have you drawn before? This is my first one. First one to draw? Oh, that's right. spectacular. Well, thank you. You really do have some talent. And you drew the plans for this landscape here. Yes, we did. Or I did. My wife and I helped on this. Um, we moved in here 22 years ago, and it was nothing but a dirt slope. And uh, we knew we had a problem when the first monsoon came. Mm -hmm. And there was a water spout that came off the top of the property. Which is washing water down right toward the house. Right. So we immediately said that we had to do retaining. We knew we had to do rain retaining walls, but I wasn't sure at what magnitude we'd end up doing them. And uh, being with some artistic talent, I couldn't build just straight walls. You had to I had have, to have some, some, some character to it. To it right. Yes. And Beautiful. also knowing that the serpentine design uh, actually has more strength to the, to the, uh, the wall itself. Is this so, something that's difficult to do, or could anyone do this? No, uh, it's not really difficult. It just takes patience. Uh, I never built a block wall in my life uh, until I had to do this. My neighbor uh, gave me the basic uh, concept and what to do with mm -hmm. the footing, and, and I went from there. He so was, it's important to start with that footer. Right. You have to build a good concrete footer with rebar in it and with some vertical rebar to uh, help support the wall and give extra strength to it. So every six feet, there are vertical uh, three-eighths inch rebar to half inch mm. rebar. That's important for someone to know if they're going to build a retaining wall, they've got right. to reinforce it. Definitely. Now this is an 18-foot slope, a just gradual slope when you got here. Yes, it was. It, uh, if you looked at the, the, the line, it just uh, traveled down the side of the mm -hmm. property there. And uh, the only way I could do this was to bring the wall further into, closer to the house. Uh, that enabled me to move the dirt forward. At first, I built the wall with no, nothing behind it, so consequently, it was, there was no load bearing on the wall itself. Yeah. So at first, uh, it was essentially at the bottom of the slope. That's correct. You built up and then brought the soil then, to it. Then with shovel, pick, and ax, I moved the dirt with wheelbarrow and backfilled behind the wall and then started the second wall. Now, so you've used a number of materials. You've got the block, but you've right. also got a railroad tie. I use railroad tie as an accent. I like to use it for different textures. Uh, it it adds, nice. adds some uh, interest to the yard. And so. so, and now instead of a steep slope where the water runs straight to the house, it runs and catches, it can permeate, it can be harvested for the plants. That's correct. Also, we put the trees in there to help hold the earth in place because the roots of the trees plus ground covers would uh, hold the soil in place as the lawn matured. Let's, or go, the garden matured. let's go look at some of this and see how you've done individual Alrighty. parts. I like the graceful curve of this wall here. And I see right here, you've got the wood and the block coming together. That's correct. Originally, this was all a uh, railroad tie staircase, but I found after time that the wood would wear down and become less safe. So mm -hmm. I eventually, last year, I removed the uh, railroad ties and replaced it with this block. I like the complement of the railroad tie and block because it gives tone and texture to the, uh, to the yard. So these were already here? These were there, were there originally, yes. And, and then I just replaced this. Okay, and I see some up here where the vertical wood is standing and what happens over time here. Right. Well, I can see here that the weight of the soil is beginning to push on these railroad ties here. That's correct, Curtis. Uh, even though I put these in about 18 years ago and they're primarily uh, eight foot and six foot ties buried in concrete, over time the weight of the, of the earth has started to bulge them out a little bit. This garden is a, an evolution and uh, I'm considering now of removing those and replacing them with boulders and a waterfall spilling down into a small pond. So it's really so, just a work in progress and as things go, you change and adapt. That's correct. That yeah, makes I've learned more from, fun. I've learned from my errors and uh, think about what I'm going to do next and do something with a little more permanency. I see you've got something else going on back here. Uh, too. Future plans to build an observation deck, a 14 by 16 foot deck that will overlook the city. That'd be pretty. So this is just continuous work. It's nice of you to share the things that have worked right and some of the things that are causing a little bit of problem. So as other people want to design a terrace garden, they can learn from your adventure. We have to come back sometime and see this waterfall now. We enjoyed having you and please do come back. Thank you. Thank you.